Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archived classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from beautiful Kinderhook, New York, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Astuba Das. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Friday. Tell a friend Friday. Tell, tell a friend about your spiritual journey. Tell them about Wisdom of the Sages. Take a little snapshot or send them a link. This stuff works if you share it. You share it with other people, especially people you know who are going through some struggle. And this has been, this has been an era of some struggle where people have to either lose their cool completely or take shelter. And we're trying to take shelter in some spiritual practice. How are you, Kostubaji? Uh, I'm doing good. Thank you. You know, I'm tired. You are, I was out late last night. You're out late partying. Yeah, partying. Krishna party. Yeah. Yep. I had Thursday night kirtan. Thursday night first kirtan time. At the Bhakti Center's back. Yeah, I, first time I've kind of been on a full-on Thursday night kirtan since before COVID. Um, very nice. You know, it's great. Is it crowded? You know who's. Yeah, I mean, relatively. I mean, not not full on like it used to be, but there's probably, I mean, there's probably 100 people there or something like that. Uh, nice, nice. But uh, Ananta chanting, Ananta Govinda. Yeah, all the heroes of New York. You know, uh, we want to also give one more final mention to our picnic on Sunday. We have a Wisdom of the Sages picnic open for all um, in Central Park. You can email us at wisdomofthesages108 at gmail.com. And put picnic in the subject line and uh, send your phone number because we're going to communicate via text because we still haven't decided explicitly where in Central Park we're going to do it. It really depends on the numbers we have. But we have a good crew and we even have a rain date to go to the Bhakti Center and chill out in on the third floor. How does, so, how does the weather look? Anyone know? Let me check it out. I never trust that weather, man. I don't. And then trust him. I, you know, trust I invited Ananta Govinda to come to the picnic. So he said he would. He's a tough guy to tie down. But uh, I, tr- I invited Johnaby. She, she's tough to tie down oh, too. But oh, okay. We'll see. She's easier though, because like if she says she's gonna do it, she's probably gonna do it. Or Ananta yeah. will say that he's gonna do it, but you'll be waiting for him. You know, because Stupe, I'm experiencing some incredible breakthroughs in uh, incredible breakthroughs. You know, students, students. You know, just I've been talking to lately, including like I got two this morning. You know, we have these things uh, in the show we call nuggets, takeaways at the end of the show, little sutras, little kernels of wisdom, Mm -hmm. you know, and they become like a type of armor from uh, Maya, from illusion. Um, the, the, The nuggets act as like a type of guardrails we can bump against when we catch ourselves like blaming, being entitled, being cruel, taking offense holding on to resentment, not having personal boundaries, not respecting our body. It's as if we sort of like scrape our car against those guardrails, but we don't go over the edge. (laughs) Maybe previously we'd go over the edge. Like we realize, okay, I'm in Maya. I'm an illusion. I'm off. I'm off my spiritual flight path. So this is our, this is our practice. You know, we've been pounding these nuggets, Pounding the Srimad Bhagavatam in our head every day. Srimad Bhagavatam every day. That's a tattoo in itself. Srimad Bhagavatam every day. And these sutras or kernels or nuggets, they become part of our thinking process. They become part of us. 
they you know they have that saying like in the mafia, you know, he knows too much. He knows too much. <laughs> we gotta off him. You know, if you know too much and you leave the mafia circle, they have to kill you. And you know, in, in Krishna consciousness, we know too much about our material life. You know, uh, and uh, you know, we're training ourselves from our crooked thinking, crooked thinking that we've been like carrying around for lifetimes, handed down to us from karmic bloodlines. You know, we, and, and we, we catch ourselves before uh, we catch ourselves between stimulus and response and we make a different action. Krishna consciousness kills material life. I don't know if you could tell, but I, I wrote <laughs> that down. I wrote that just, down. I, I just got inspired this morning. Transcendental cliches now. <laughs> What's the point? Get us. My, my point, what, what my were friend, these, What were these? My uh, point is my people, people are writing me and, and yeah. they're just saying, you know what? I'm going through this time, but it's my fault. I'm owning this. I'm oh, blaming. Okay. I'm blaming. That kind of breakthrough. I'm actually resentful of people. That's my fault. Right. Like I have some hate in my heart right now. It's my fault. It's it's the beginning of taking full responsibility. Radical for everything responsibility. I'm going through. The radical responsibility, which is important to healing anything, because you can't heal unless you say this is mine. And you know what? Now I have to sit in this stew of resentment or, 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 or feel the effects of misusing my body. Or I have to make a different choice. Stream my Bhagavatam every day. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. People are making different choices. I'm making a different choice. I'm going through the, I'm going through the, the tumbler right now. And I'm really trying to keep a level head. And it's just, it's really, I'm going to give a credit to the Bhagavatam and to the Sangha. Because, uh, you know, I try to be enthusiastic in the morning and, and give our class and give our nuggets and uh, tell a story. But, you know, and sometimes I can lift people up, but the Sangha lifts me up. The, co the community lifts me up when I'm down. Nice. So there's accountability and there is um, there's accountability and there's uh, strength in numbers. You know, there's that saying, you have a little twig. It's easy to break a little twig. But when you get 100 twigs, very difficult to break. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that. That's where I'm at this morning. And I, that's where people are at. It's beautiful to get these inspirational messages from people going through their stuff, owning responsibility, making different choices. All right. Didn't we say that last night? Me, what? Mara, Mallory, and Justin all went on a Joppa walk last night. Okay. We had a song. What did we say, Mara? Something about chanting. We're chanting for better choices. Yeah, that was it. We're chanting. We're chanting around. Just please make me make a better choice when I go through my stuff. Hmm. Where did you walk? We're at Bobby's house while Bobby's in Canada. Me and Justin are camping out here. And uh, we, there's this incredible bike trail. It goes from New York City to Canada. It's unbelievable, and it goes right next to Bobby's house. If you ever on that bike trail, just pull over in Kinderhook, and it means I could ride a bike door. right up to Bobby's house. What's that? I could ride a bike right up to Bobby's you house. You could ride a bike from your house on a on a pristine trail really? right to Bobby's doorstep, basically. Amazing. Sorry, Bobby, if I <laughs> revealed your house to the general public. <laughs> <laughs> They're good people. <laughs> Okay. All right. What do you say we dive into some Srimad Bhagavatam? Let's do it. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayva narotamam devim sarasvatim vyasam datojayam mudirayet. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord, Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And to Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nasta prayeshva badreshu nitchum bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated, and loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Ajnana Anjana Salakaya. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my teachers are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. 
I offer my respectful obeisances at their lotus feet. Good morning. Good morning. So we are in the third canto, chapter 15. The description of the kingdom of God. And we're getting into the story of Jai and Vijay, these transcendental gatekeepers, and the four Kumaras, these ancient, old, wise men who just decided they didn't want to get old and they kept the, the bodies of young children and naked, little naked ch- children, little five-year-olds. Little they, that's what they children. look like, right? Little naked five-year-olds. five-year-olds. Yeah. And, and what did it say yesterday? They were dressed just by the atmosphere or something like they that. They were wearing only the atmosphere. Yeah. Who knows what text we're on today? We are on, well, we ended yesterday with 31, which was interesting, right? It, it would million. describe that um, when Jai and Vijay, the gatekeepers to Vaikuntha, when they um, blocked um, the four Kumaras, these little boys, the little boys, there's a type of anger that arose in them, right? And we heard this uh, phrase, Kam Anuja. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Following the son of desire. The son of desire. The desire, son of desire comes from anger. Or no, oh wait, Kam, Kam Anuja. What is it? Fo- so what follows Kama anger. means desire, and Anuja means follows, or like the younger brother, like a younger brother follows an older brother. Hmm. So Kam Anuja is a is a term that refers to anger. It's so nice. You build it right in, as a linguist. You should be fa- fascinated by this, Raghunath, right? Well, I am fascinated by it. I should start studying Sanskrit seriously. Yeah, you build the philosophy right into the into the language. And so a word for anger is that which follows desire. Kamanuja. Kamanuja. Yeah. And, the, and so that verse also, it used the term suhritama. Surit? Tama. Friend? Suhrit means friend or beloved, yeah. Tama? Well, yeah, but because, you know, and again, I know practically nothing about Sanskrit, but I assume that that means like Uttama, but because they put, they, they put the two words together, it became Suhrit, instead of Suhrit, Uttama, right. it became Uttam, Suhrit The top most friend. The most beloved, yeah, or the best of all friends. So because the four Kumars were being barred from um, their the desire to have darshan of the Suhrittama, the dearest friend of all living beings, then Kamanuja, uh, anger followed that desire, or that, you know, the blocking of that desire. Mm. And that's where we're at. So then uh, today we begin with text 32. Text 32, here we go. The sages said, who are oh, these hold on, two? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I may have my, my numbers wrong, is that correct? That's right. That's right, okay. Please continue, Thanks, I'm Mary. sorry. The sages said, who are these two persons who have developed such a discordant mentality, even though they are posted in the service of the Lord in the highest position and are expected to have developed the same qualities as the Lord? Mm. How are these two persons living in Vaikuntha? Where is the possibility of an enemy's coming into the kingdom of God? The Supreme Personality of Godhead has no enemy. Who could be envious of him? Probably these two persons are imposters, Therefore, they suspect others to be like themselves. Okay, so why are there even... They're questioning. Why are there gatekeepers anyway? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who are these people? Yeah, it's interesting, right? There's a lot in... You know, again, it seems to me, as we read this chapter, that really a lot that we're meant to draw from it is what is the difference... Not even... It's not, like, not so much like in the geography between the spiritual realm and the material realm, right? It's like we can conceive it if I need, to, I need to go from one place to another, but it has more to do with the mentality of the spiritual world and the material world. And, and of course, the, the name, the, the word that's being used for the spiritual world is Vaikuntha, right? The place where there's no anxiety. Hmm. So what is the difference between Vaikuntha and Kuntha, right? The place of anxiety and the place of no anxiety. And um, we're, it, through, through these descriptions, we're, tra- we're figuring out, like, what's the difference? Wh- where do I need to take my own mentality if I want to become free from anxiety, right? If I want to enter into spiritual consciousness. 
And so these sages are like, hold it. You know, we're supposed to be in this spiritual realm where there's no anxiety. And then we got these two guys, right? Well, where did they come from? They don't seem to embody the mood that, that belongs in this place, right? And so they're using different words and different phrases here, but one they use is, is they have a discordant mentality, right? You there, Raga? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. I thought you were going some, some, well, somewhere I, with that. I am, but I'm, we're going together, right? So, yeah. so um, I'm just making sure you're still coming along. Yeah, I'm and so, so, you know, I looked up discordant, right? Yeah. What does discord mean? Discord means sort of like a cacophony. A cacophony? You like that? You're throwing a, a bigger they word at me. Call me Mr. <laughs> Thesaurus! I'm trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out one word and you're throwing a bigger <laughs> word at me. It means, a, it, it means a, a bunch of notes together making a, 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 a sound that's unpleasant to the yeah, ears. Yeah, they don't blend, right? Yeah, so discord. Well. Yeah, here it's adjective. It's an ad Discordant is an adjective. Mm. Disagreeing or incongruous, characterized by quarreling and conflict, um, you know, but commonly it's used in terms of like it's a musical term, right? Yeah, discordant, like, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so it's harsh and jarring because of a lack of harmony. Now, that's yeah. important there, right? Like a lack of harmony. Right. So if you were to play an A uh, the, on the scale, an A and a B together, it'd be a discord. It, it just doesn't blend right. Doesn't they blend don't. Right. They don't work together. No. He's... So, so the sages again. They're saying, who are these two persons who have developed such a discord mentality? It's like unharmonious, right? Like it doesn't fit in this place, and it's creating some kind of discordant kind of experience, right? Where it's like it's jarring and it, it's harsh. And this is our life. <laughs> this is the every, material world. This right? is material world where we have some discordant. Um, relationship with our, our ourselves, eh? Well, that is a relationship with ourselves, and therefore we're always getting purified. Yeah. We're getting purified. Any pain I go through, I'm getting purified. Any pain these people text message, they're getting purified to recorrect, make better choices, get back in accordance instead of discordance with their oh. spiritual self. Mm -hmm. Look at you playing with the language, just like an expert, just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wordsmith accordance <laughs> yeah it's okay yeah it's a... <laughs> but but i think you just took it to another level Raghunath, because mm. i was thinking in terms of like harmony with each other right in other words in this in the spiritual there's no realm, harmony with each other Prabhu. well, well in the only, spiritual realm, there's gotta be harmony there's... with ourselves oh there's gotta be harmony first of all right okay so 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 let's look at both of these you know because um, here we're, you know, the sages are saying, you know, they're, they're not in harmony with everybody else here, right? We're, right. we're, we're, we pass through six gates and we're feeling the atmosphere here, right? And yeah. we can feel that there's no selfishness here and there's no fear here. There's no anxiety here. And then suddenly there are these two guys that are like all uptight, yeah. right? All, you know, they're all in anxiety here. How, what are they doing here? It's discordant. It doesn't fit in. It's not harmonious. It's not working with everybody else here. Um, and it's getting in the way of our connecting with the Suhritama, with a, with a, you know, with a supreme friend of everyone. These, these two are, are just, they don't seem to belong here. They seem to be imposters. But I like what you're saying. It's like, and, and such just like a solid, important principle, you know, because... Look what they said here. They, they, they said something that was interesting. They said, who are these two persons who have developed such a discordant mentality even though they're posted in the service of the Lord mm -hmm. in the highest position and, mm -hmm. and are expected to have developed the same qualities as, of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, in, in other words, this is what it, you know, in turn, like, sometimes religion gets turned into this kind of thing where it's just about your faith right faith and your costume that you wear and the, showing up in that the right yeah the, no. the the particular church that you belong to or the particular right. maybe a costume that you wear or you know you've pledged your allegiance to a particular organization yeah and 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 that's it that's what we're supposed to do and i did it right but here it's saying no if you're if you're posted in service of the lord 
well, then you you are expected to have developed the same qualities of the Lord. Mm. Right. That's that's what it's really about. So really, what it be, so if I want to become the servant of God, really the first place I look is towards myself. Am I developing the right qualities so that I actually can be posted in this service? Right. And so now we're talking about develop harmony within the self. And and and, uh, and and really, I understand that is like what really yoga is all about. What does yoga mean? Like literally the word yoga? To connect, to, to link. Connect or, yeah, or sometimes we say union, right? Union, yoga yeah, union. Yeah, you can, you can, you can say it in, in terms of like connecting or uniting. But what does that mean? And sometimes we'll say, and it could be understood in different ways. Like we can say it means to unite with God or, you know, to connect with God. But another way, you know, valid, very valid way to look at it is it's looking at the, there's the nature of the self, right? Like underneath the body and underneath the different layers of the mind, the manas, the impulsive part of the mind, and the ahankara, the ego, and the buddhi, or the intellect, or the discriminatory part of the mind. You go still, it's more and more subtle, right? Different, you know, from gross layers like the physical body itself to the subtle layers of the mind. And then you have the self, the soul, which is eternal, right? Which is who we really are. Mm. But sometimes, you know, like the body is referred to the self and the mind is referred to the self too. Like that, the word atma, can also refer to the body and to the mind. They're not our true eternal self, mm. but it's part of the package, you know, that we're moving around in temporarily, the, the temporary self, right? It's yeah. part of the larger package of the temporary self. But it's out of harmony. In other words, particularly if the mind is out of harmony with the true self, with the soul, then we experience this discordant feeling all the time, right? And fear, anxiety anger, lust, greed, all, all of the, the, the exact opposite qualities of the Lord. So, so yoga means kind of like harmonizing the mind with the, tr the nature of the true self, with the soul. Mm. And we do that through bhakti yoga. Right? It's a way of harmonizing the mind. Different I've never, ever showed you my to ever tell you my analogy about this? It's about the good dancer and the bad dancer. I think you good have. Good analogy. Okay, let's hear it again. The soul has a way... If you've ever seen someone, two people dance very beautifully together, mm -hmm. it's like watching one person dance. But if you see mm -hmm. a good person dance and a bad person dance together, it's like it's awkward. A bad dancer, not necessarily. A bad, a bad dancer <laughs> good person, and a bad. good dancer together. The whole thing is awkward. It doesn't gel. So I have a material frame, a karmic, uh, a, a karmic bag that I've inherited from bloodlines of whatever, whether you call it. Uh, your karma, your genes, whatever it is, we got this body. And it's programmed a certain way of behaviors, reactions, how we're going to react is programmed a certain way. And then I've got the spirit soul. The spirit soul is pure. The spirit soul is connected. The spirit soul has a way to react to uh, loss, gain, success, failure, etc. Pro, It's what it is. It's got desires. The spirit soul has desires. Yeah. And then I have this clunky body. And when they merge together, it's an awkward dance. It's a dance. One guy's doing the material dance. One guy's doing the spiritual dance. And what we're doing is we're training our outside body to dance with the soul, mm -hmm. the desires to move with the soul's desire, the actions, the way we speak to people, the way we treat people, the way we move in this world, what we consume through all the senses. It becomes like a beautiful dancing with the stars. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If, if, otherwise, it's discordant, right? Otherwise, and you, and yeah. you know, I think, um, I think as people become more deeply spiritual, mm. they become more sensitive to the to the discordant notes that are playing in the mind. Right. right. If, if, note that one down there, Mara. There's, right. There's, there's, they know too much. They know too much. <laughs> yeah, and, and they, but, but they can feel, you know what? Right now I'm feeling that discord. I'm feeling that lack of harmony. I'm feeling, you know, within myself, right? Like even the way that I'm thinking right now is creating a discordant note within me. And I want to um, address that, you know? 
It, w w were you cueing me to plug our Discord thread? Was that what this whole thing is going towards? <laughs> if you're on our it. Patreon account, join our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. And we're on a, a vibrant Discord thread that every time I put it down and don't check it for two weeks or a week, I realize there's a whole thing going on there with people. You know, it's it's community. People are on their phones anyway doing stuff. They have the, just like a little Krishna conscious community and conversation going on and yes sometimes it veers off and they talk about hardcore bands but for the most part discord it's records impressive it's pretty impressive hmm. but thanks for that lead up close to the discord <laughs> i had no intention I, I was meant to leading to lead up to the to the commentary of the verse why don't we read that you got the com you want the co commentary 33 yeah 33, commentary right? to 32 32 okay uh blah, blah. the difference between the inhabitants of vaikuntha planet and those of the material planet is that in vaikuntha all the residents uh in the service of the are in the service of the lord himself and they all are the equipped, residents engage in the service of the lord himself and are equipped with all his good qualities there you go right so it has to do with not allegiance Here's a, here's one, Mary. Ah, it's I not like it's not about allegiance. It's about developing the qualities. Look at Mara. She perked up. Ooh, I can write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> it has been analyzed by great personalities that when a conditioned soul is liberated and becomes a devotee, about seventy nine percent of all the good qualities of the Lord develop in the person. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, there's that list. Seventy nine percent of all the good qualities develop. Well, like Krishna has these 64 prominent qualities. Yeah. And then he manifests 64 of those qualities through Vishnu, but not the other four. Right. S That's a great trivia not... question, too, by the way. You know right. that. And then Shiva. Well, you want... Okay, should I hit you with that question? Hit right me. Now? See if I got it. It's been a while. Okay, name the 64 qualities. Oh, no. Not Krishna. that trivia <laughs> question, man. <laughs> Okay, let the, what, here, are the what five, are the five, what is it? Four? What are the, well, okay, well, let's do it this way. Because I got it right here, right now. You see, okay. you thought I'm not I looking at anything. Prepared. I'm not going to Google. My hands are in the air. Okay, Put your hands in the it. air and answer this hot seat question. Ready? Okay, so, so let's first ask you that, okay, there are 50 that like all the regular jivas like us that we could manifest. Okay. Right. 50 qualities out of the 64. Yeah. And then besides those, there are five more that Lord Shiva manifests, and sometimes even Brahma, apparently. What are those five? What are those five? You weren't ready for that. I wasn't ready for that. I was ready for okay. the five different <laughs> oh, You just wanted to do the five. Okay, so those five are changeless, all cognizant, which is really interesting, right? Yeah. Because the demigods were just speaking to Brahma like, you know everything. Right. right. So Lord Shiva and, and Brahma. It's yeah. Cognizant. All cognizant. Ever fresh. Ever fresh. Shiva is ever fresh. Now this even, one's a little... Yeah, go ahead. Ever fresh. I mean, even when Shiva's sort of like, you know, he looks a little rough around the edges. He's an ever fresh rough around the edges. <laughs> it's sort apparently. of like that, that, that <laughs> wake she up was, hair, but you look good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know exactly what all these mean we'd need like longer commentaries on them you okay. know to explain and particularly this one because it says such ananda which you know Prabhupada will say that you know the 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 jivas are such ananda so exactly but it also in the list that i'm reading it gives a little um qualifier possessing an eternal blissful body so i guess maybe his form is such ananda like you know where are like our full, you know, when you add our bodies to it, it's not such an under. Maybe that's what it, the difference. Then, uh, the, and then the, the fifth is possessing all mystic perfections. Okay. So that brings you up to 55. Okay. Now there'll be five more that are manifest by Lord Vishnu or Narayana. Do you know those? No. These are not, these are not manifested within. The, the oh, normal one, jiva one or, is can grant liberation from birth and death. Um, well, it, it, it's, but more specifically, to whom? To the jiva. Yeah. 
Well, I think the one that you're talking about is that he's the giver of salvation to the enemies whom he kills. Like when they kill okay. some, when Forget he, it. right? All right, when, you yeah. just tell me. I don't no, no, no. Well, I mean, that more time. or less, yeah. Okay. But but like in other words, when the, when <laughs> most of us, if we kill someone, or you know, like that we we're not necessarily granting them salvation. But when Lord Vishnu does, <laughs> I'm going to give you salvation. salvation. <laughs> so um, the fifty sixth quality is that he has inconceivable potency. The 57th is uncountable universes generate from his body, right? Not even Lord Shiva can do that. Well, that's, that's something exclusively for Vishnu. Yeah. Um, 58, he is the original source of all incarnations. Interesting. Mm -hmm. right? Then uh, 59 is the one about giving salvation to those that he kills. And 60 is, he's the attractor, the at attractor of liberated souls. Okay. Huh, so that's, that's very interesting. It's, I love the fact that there's a nuance between liberated souls and Vishnu Bhaktas. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. You can be liberated right, right. and still not be a Vishnu Bhakta. Free from the influence of the, the, the gunas, the modes of material nature, but still haven't yet developed this kind of um, personal connection and love, right? Which is interesting because that's going to play out with the four Kumaras here too, right? They're, they're liberated, but they haven't developed that kind of intense bhakti or love for God right. yet. Right. right. Okay, drum gonna roll. Happen. Something's going to happen. Okay, the, the big four. What are the four qualities that Krishna has that even, or let's say Krishna displays, right, manifests that even Lord Vishnu doesn't? Okay, this is a good trivia takeaway today. <laughs> you like is, it especially for the trivia value. <laughs> <laughs> one is has loving relationships with his devotees. Well, oh yeah, here it's, it's written as he is surrounded by devotees endowed with wonderful love of Godhead. Mm, so okay. it's like, it's, this is on some particular unique level, right? That you won't find him ever not surrounded by people that are just like full of love for him. Mm. Full of um, pure he, love for him. Another one, he plays a flute. Yeah, he plays it. He can attract all living entities all over the universe by playing his flute. Very interesting. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, he he. Vishnu he, uh, doesn't do that. Vishnu doesn't do that. He, no one plays but that flute, flute playing. Yeah, it's not ordinary flute playing. It's like it's something when he plays that thing. It's like it's a whole another level of communication going on. Yeah. Um, the next one is um, he 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 performs. He displays fantastic pastimes like killing demons. Yeah, he is the performer of wonderful varieties of pastimes, especially. His childhood pastimes. Uh huh. And that, I cannot, that Raghunath is particularly attracted to. I cannot think of the fourth one. That was probably um, bad. Well, it's a kind of like a fundamental one, but it's just that he's got it so incredibly prominent that this it's just overwhelming. What is that? He has a wonderful excellence of beauty, which cannot be rivaled anywhere in the creation. Well. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I would say. But, I mean, well, it's pretty cool considering Lord Vishnu is very beautiful, you know? Of course. Lord yeah, Shiva yeah. is very beautiful. But there's nothing like Krishna's beauty. Like a little baby beautiful. little baby <laughs> well, god. There's, there's the baby Krishna. There's also other other uh, forms of Krishna that are also have that beauty, that manifest that beauty. Okay, so that's what was being referred to here in this commentary where it started speaking about that um, it was it was referring to something specific when it started saying that um, about 79% of all the good qualities of the Lord develop in a liberated person, right? So the, the one we return to this commentary, again, the sentence was, it has been analyzed by great personalities that when a conditioned soul is liberated and becomes a devotee, then about 79% of all the good qualities of the Lord develop in their person. Therefore, in the Vaikuntha world, there is no question of enmity between the Lord and the residents. Here in this material world, the citizens may be inimical to the chief executives or heads of state. Mm -hmm. But in Vaikuntha, there is no such mentality. One is not allowed to enter Vaikuntha unless he has completely developed the good qualities. The basic principle of goodness is to accept subordination to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The sages, therefore, were surprised to see that these two doormen, who ch <laughs> these two doormen, remind me of the Seinfeld doormen episode. The doormen, 
That's oh, another that good one. <laughs> who checked them from entering the palace were not exactly like the residents of Icundaloca. It may be said that a doorman's duty is to determine who should be allowed to enter the palace and who should not. But that is not relevant in the matter because no one is allowed to enter the Vaikuntha planets unless he has developed 100% his mentality of the devotional service to the Supreme Lord. No enemy of the Lord can enter Vaikuntha Loka. The Kumaras concluded that only the reason for the doormen's checking them was that the doormen themselves were imposters. Imposters. This is us. We're, when we are not acting in God consciousness, we are imposters. We're not, not acting on what we actually are. Therefore, we're fronting or we're being inauthentic or we're putting on a show or we are um, showing off or s- some bravado or some persona, but it's disconnected from what we actually are. And there'll always be a type of anxiety because because we're always in fear we're going to be found out. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, you. I remember when I got my uh, when I when I changed apartments, and you were saying like, "Does it have a doorman?" <laughs> and, have a doorman. But you and, and you like a doorman, but I don't like to have a doorman in my. Oh man, apartment. I had a doorman in one building, in when I lived in Brooklyn Heights, it was so yeah. great. We got your mail, Mister Capo. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I never want to torment because it's just like you gotta, you, sometimes you got to deal with that guy like all the time. Like you're just coming in and out. You know what, like, though? I like I like talking to like people. That. I talk yeah. to everybody. Well, I like talking to people, too, but I just don't necessarily want to have the same one like every time I need to come in or out of my home. But it is a thing. They try to lord over you, the doorman. That, well, that's my point. And that's what you know that what? Seinfeld is... thing was about. Like, the doorman was just like... Just, they have just too no much man. control. And they're like... <laughs> <crisp. laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you need a good doorman. You that need was a good... such a good episode, by the way. <laughs> you, need, you need a doorman. Well, let's go back. Let's go back a little bit in this comedy. Because, like, again, what we're talking about is the difference between the, the Vaikuntha mentality, like the non-anxiety mentality, and the kunta mentality, or the, uh, you know, the, the the mentality that brings anxiety, inauthentic, you know, imposter. So here it's saying that that um, in Vaikuntha, the residents are all engaged in the service of the Lord Himself, and even that may be like, what you got to serve when you're like, you got to be the servant. And it says, and they are equipped with all His good qualities. Okay, so like. Already, you've you've got all these good qualities. So you, there's a purity and a happiness in you, right? And 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 there's no envy. You know, I don't. I'm not lacking anything. And and um. But then there's some interesting stuff. Where Prabhupada says, therefore, in, Vi- in the Vaikuntha world, there's no question of enmity between the Lord and the residents there. Then he says, here in this material world, the citizens may be inimical to the chief executives or heads of state, right? And of course, we see that all the time right people like, don't like the president or the presidents on every level i mean you hear he's saying the chief executives or heads of state but you know a chief executive is like you know the ceo you right. know my boss okay. yeah anybody right. yeah we don't like, like anybody whoever's... over us <laughs> exactly we don't want Everybody's anybody telling over me us. what to do yeah and that's why we have such a hard time potentially with the personal conception of god because i don't want a boss anymore yeah you know, they have that line in there, like, we have to become, I can't remember where it's in there somewhere, so it's subordinate Ooh, to, that's exactly I was like, where oh going. my God, that's Americans ex- are like, oh, subordinate. <laughs> that's exactly where I'm, I'm going right there. You try to, you just try to like go around that, Raghunath, right? You just try to like jump or, you know, just kind of <laughs> like. <laughs> that's yeah. what you were leading to? The I'm, go, I'm going right there. Like, you got, you got to go right to that point, okay? So, so again, he says, here in this material world, the citizen may be inimical to the chief executives or heads of state. But in Vaikuntha, there is no such mentality. One is not allowed to enter Vaikuntha. One is not allowed to become free from, from anxiety unless they have completely developed the good qualities. And then here it comes, right? The basic principle of goodness, right? If you want to understand what it's all about, the basic principle of goodness is to accept subordination to the supreme personality of God. It's like, whoa, <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Um, so you know, you know, I looked you know. up the word subordinate. Okay. Okay. Now, when we hear that word, it comes from the Latin. Are you here? Here you go, Mister. What do you call it again? A philo- philologist. Philologist, Mister. Philologist. I got it. Ready? 
the, so yeah. the word subordinate comes from the Latin sub meaning B below. Below, <laughs> correct. <laughs> you were like, "Was this a trick question?" <laughs> uh, uh, Subway sandwich, a hoagie, and and then ordinaire or ordinare, ordinare, which means or ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> it means to ordain. To ordain. To ordain as below. Okay. Right. So when we hear that, we're like, "I don't want to be ordained as below." <laughs> You know, can, I wanted at least to be equal, right, right? Like, can't everyone? Well, I be equal? ordain you <laughs> as lesser than <laughs> everyone. But you know, so so we can think of that. It means like being ordained, or like you know, I don't want to be you know cl you know um, ordained to be less than or below. But I think there's another that way that we can think of this, right? Like, in other words, to be ordained as below. There's another way to think of below. Mm. And that is like saying like you're below an umbrella, right? It's like that's exactly where you want to be, right? It's like it means I'm under the shelter of something. I like where you're going with you this. You like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So like yeah, I'm I'm you know I'm subordinate. It means like I'm under that shelter. I'm under that you know that ashraya we say in Sanskrit, right? And we like that as devotees. We yeah. like that. You know, Tukaram gave a great class on uh, Nam Ras's podcast. Um, What's this podcast called? Oh, the, the the late morning program. The late morning program. Yeah, the the Tukaram one was, uh, Tukaram's coming on our, uh, as our guest this weekend too. This Sunday. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited for that. But he gave he he gave this beautiful um, uh, uh, talk about this concept of subordination Did as he? devotees. Okay. Um, and then after the class, we we were talking on the phone. We were saying the same thing. How we want to be subordinate. We I don't want my teacher to be my friend. I've got right. friends. I want my teachers to be my teachers and I want to keep it that way. And when they try to get like sometimes, you know, in our case, sometimes we're out Swami will say, hey, well, come eat with us and we'll sit down and eat. It's like painful to eat with Maharaj because we don't want to be we don't want to have him as a buddy. We want him as we want to. My relationship is that of service. So mm -hmm. it's almost like, um, please, this is an awkward position. I don't want to be here eating with you. I want to serve you dinner. Let me serve you dinner. And um, this thing with uh, in devotees, we like that. We like that. And it's the senior's position to be friendly if they want, to be chummy if they want. But it's it's our position as students to want want to keep that distance. Yeah. Because that way the mercy flows. And that's how it works in the bhakti system in the transmission of sacred knowledge. And Krishna gets pleased by that and then empowers mm. the teacher to give you what you need in that cup. Mm. It's a very, very uh, incre incredible thing. And you, ha you have a responsibility on both sides almost um, to, uh, to want to keep that distance inherently and sort of sometimes mm. even keep a distance. Or you, you know, know you can phrase it in a different way, I think, too. Like, in other words, it's not necessarily distance. In other words, like if there's an umbrella and there's someone under the umbrella, right? So one's the shelter and one's taking shelter. And then if like if that. the umbrella says, hey, you're an umbrella too, actually you become more distant, <laughs> right? It's like, <laughs> I want to be right here under you. I want to be up close. And, and I'm close when I'm in the subordinate position, when I'm under you, you know, then I'm really close. This is like a little magic trick of bhakti yoga. that, mm -hmm. And it's not like this in a lot of cultures. And Tukaram was mentioning on this podcast, like every other culture, like in the East, gets this in Japan and Korea. And, right. You know, you take a bullet for your elder, you know, in America, yeah. like we don't have that at all. We couldn't care less about elders or, you know, India, we wake up and touch their feet. The idea of my father is, you know, I appreciate my father, whatever my father says. We don't have that here. And, and, so and you know, we have to re I, we relearn the fundamentals of yeah. life. And, and a lot of that may come from, you know, certain religious presentations, right? Or or a breakaway, yeah, break away from those religious presentations too. We're trying to find ourselves. The, well, We're renegades I mean. here in America. That, that's what I mean. In other words, if if God is presented to me as like this arbitrary rule maker that punishes like crazy for like the smallest offense, it's like come sure. on, you know, it's like you're trying to you what what you're trying to do is like regulate my life, take all the joy out of life, you know with a with a heavy threat it's like i'm you know 
I, I want something spiritual, but it's definitely not that. Yeah. You know? So then, there, so give me a spirituality where there's no God, where there, where there's no one to be subordinate to, where I'm God. You know. You no, know, because Stubb, you also made this point about um, being good. If you be good, then you get into Vaikuntha. But it, it almost sounds like good to an ex extra, extra, eh, extraneous. extrinsic. Look at Mara. She's like, let him, let him wrestle this one. Extrinsic. <laughs> it's coming for out. Like, I have to now become good. But it's not like we're trying to adopt some quality. I am not those things, so I got to become those things. Yeah. We are those things. Right. We are those things. You don't have to become somebody you're not. And now I'm welcome into the kingdom of God. It's mm -hmm. we are those things. We are kind. We are thoughtful. We are caring. We are compassionate. I just haven't been acting that way. But those things is what I am at the core. Right. Yeah. Well, but that gets back to the point where it's like saying that this union or this uniting or this harmony, you know, it's in one sense, in one sense, like what this whole chapter is telling us, it's all about harmony, right? When you are harmonious, with the Vaikuntha world, and when you've adopted the Vaikuntha mentality, right, you, you, you're free of anxiety, you're happy, your natural qualities that are you, they manifest in you, they illuminate your mind, and, and, and you feel good. And when you stray from that, you feel this discordance, right, this harshness, this, you know, like that, like, like musically, when you hit the wrong note, and it just feels off, just, yeah, it just feels bad. So, um, so, so in bhakti, you know, there's different, the different paths of yoga have to do with how they deal with the mind. They're all about reaching the self that's underneath, but they have different strategies of how to deal with the mind. Some yogas try to still the mind. Some yogas try to kind of like crush all the attachments of the mind through analysis. And in bhakti yoga, it's just all about harmonizing the mind with the nature of the self. If the nature of the self, as you're saying, you know, is good and is full of love right and and has an attraction to god and, and um and you know ha is manifesting all the good qualities you know kindness um you know generosity you know compassion etc but if my if that's the nature of me the self underneath everything but those qualities are not manifest in my mind and, and as a as a matter of fact my mind may be largely programmed the opposite way it may be programmed towards like arrogance and callousness and, you know, just due to what I've been exposed to, due to what's come through my senses, the messages that have come through my senses have programmed my mind to be discordant with the, the nature of my true self. Well, then that means I have to reprogram that mind. And so that means I need to, what, where did we start? Bhagavatam every day, right? Every day. Bhagavatam every day. This is, this is going to harmonize my mind with myself. Kirtan every day you know maha mantra every day you know in, in these ways you know um the who i associate with etc the rituals that i perform in life um the the cultural arts that i participate in you know the books that i read and the poetry that i read and the the, the music that i listen to and, and so on the, the paintings that i like to look at and contemplate and so on all of that bhakti yoga engages all of that um, in a way to, as a method of reprogramming the mind. For what purpose? Not, not randomly, so that it's harmonious with the true nature of the self. And when the mind is no longer discordant with the self, or you can say when the mind is now in harmony with the self, that experience is called yoga. And that's the, that's the greatest experience, right? That's called self-realization, that's called enlightenment, however you want to. However you want Bodhisattva. to. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Just to throw it out. Buddha yeah, nature. Eastern terminologies. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's that's what we're trying to do in, in, in Bhakti Yoga. Okay. Uh, yeah, where are we at? What time is it? We're on text. Uh, now we're on text 33. Text 33. Jumping back in. In the Vaikuntha world, there is complete harmony between the residents and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There you go again. You see? Doing the same dance. Yeah. 
just as there is complete harmony within the space between the big and the small skies. Mm. What? Why then? <laughs> why? I tell you what, that what thing that I do is it, it really has a good, it, it has a real thing in life. It has, a, has a real application. <laughs> it has a real application many times a day, I find. <laughs> why then is there a seed of fear in this field of harmony? These two persons are dressed like inhabitants of Aikuntha, but where from can their disharmony come into existence? Yeah, they brought in all this disharmony. We got to deal with that. So uh, why don't we read the commentary to this as well? You like this? Just yeah, maybe we'll get an answer to the question, right, about the two skies. What, what was the phrase again that we just read? About the, the phrase they just used? Yeah. Um, harmony, just like the harmony between the... Big just like, and just like the harmony within space between the big and the small skies. Yeah. What? Okay. Just as there are different departments in each state in the material world, the civil department and the criminal department, so in God's creation there are two departments of existence. As in the material world, we find that the criminal department is far, far smaller than the civil department. So mm. the material world which is considered the criminal department is one fourth of the entire creation of the Lord. And who are the criminals? Who are the criminals? We are. Okay. <laughs> we're we're the renegades. Good. Every, <laughs> every embodied Jiva, right. Yeah. Is criminal in one sense, because we're trying to be a renegade from, from our real nature. We're trying to be imposters. Yeah. We're all all the discordant... walking around with costumes on the Mara costume. The Jimmy James costume, the Matthew Sava costume. <laughs> We're all these discord notes, and it's like, okay, you're you're out of here. We're gonna. We're trying to pretend, walking around, pretending to be something we're not. Hmm. Fulfill desires, trying to run, chasing desires that won't fulfill us. It's like we got kicked out of the band because, like, we're playing all these discord notes. Right? Got kicked out of the band. <laughs> and now we're here on this Zoom call. You ever kick someone out of the band, Rugga? All they the were time. Discordant. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> were you the guy that had to do that, or did you say Parmananda? Could you kick him out of the band? I don't know how. People, I think just people are like, ah, I'm over this. <laughs> <laughs> they left the band. Huh? Uh, yeah. That's kind of the way it works, actually, you know, entering, you know, the material realm, too. It's like we kind of decide to leave the band, I suppose. I'm leaving the band. I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm le and yeah but the band is the Lord. It's the Mahavishnu Orchestra. That's the band we're leaving. Mm. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a band, right? The Mahavishnu Orchestra? The Mahavishnu Orchestra was John McLaughlin and uh, I think Carlos Santana played with them sometimes or something like that. I don't think he was part of it officially, though. Have you ever heard of them, Mara? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't know them very well. A little jazz Still fusion. Oh, look, Isabel yeah. Bilodeau's holding it up. Holding oh, up she's got record. the uh -huh. Mahavishnu Orchestra. Yeah, they were into... Um, Super group of jazz fusion, Luke Carlin Yeah, jazz says. fusion. I think they were into uh, Sri Chinmoy. Okay. All right, Sri Chinmoy. I've been to Sri Chinmoy's vegetarian restaurants in Germany. Okay. Yeah. He's that guy, he's like... Can pull he a train with his teeth, yeah, something that. like that. Yeah, some like... strange <laughs> mystic who plays every instrument. Yeah. <laughs> he could, yeah, he can lift heavy weights and things like that. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> sure, each him. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. <sighs> Where were you in the commentary? So Living entities, residents. The living interior. entities like ourselves, being part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, are meant to satisfy the senses of the Lord. Mm. Thus, whenever there is a discrepancy in that harmony, immediately the living entities get entrapped by maya or illusion. Okay. The external energy of the Lord is called the material world, and the kingdom of God of the uh, and the kingdom of the internal energy of the Lord is called Vaikuntha or the kingdom of God. In the Vaikuntha world, there is no disharmony between the Lord and the residents. Therefore, God's creation in the Vaikuntha world is perfect. There is no cause of fear. The entire kingdom of God is such a complete harmonious unit that there is no possibility of enmity. Everything is absolute. Just as there are many physiological constructions within the body, yet they work in one, in one order for the satisfaction of the stomach. There's that analogy. I love that one. 
And just as in the machine, there are hundreds and thousands of parts, yet they run in harmony to fulfill the function of the machine. Mm -hmm. In the Vaikuntha planets, the Lord is perfect. And the inhabitants also perfectly engage in the service of the Lord. It's, we... it's, well, yeah, I mean, we could, we could spend some time with that even right there, right? Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's an analogy that we use a lot of time. You know, the hand, Prabhupada said there are many physiological constructions within the body. For instance, the hand, right? Um, yet they work in one order to satisfy, for the satisfaction of the stomach, and then the stomach nourishes them, right? Great analogy. So, yeah, so so it's, um, it, it's, it's just saying, you know, like, whenever I feel discord, whenever I feel anxiety, we should understand in some way I've become disharmonious or, and you know, there's a word here that's, that's used is Dharma, right? That I have an, an essential purpose in life, right? Th there's temporary dharmas, like, you know, there's temporary roles that I might play, but there's an eternal Dharma as well. And that just means my eternal Dharma is loving service to God. My, you know, is harmonious, is, is being harmonious in my relationship with God. And it's, a, and that is a beautiful dance, right? And, and if I'm feeling anxiety, if I'm feeling some kind of suffering, if I'm feeling depression, if I'm feeling boredom, et cetera, it means that somehow I've messed up that harmony. Somehow I've misunderstood my dharma. Somehow I've strayed from dharma. Mm. And, there, and, and so, the, so again, the wise person, we, we started here, right? They're real sensitive. Even, you know, this is where Bhagavatam starts, right? You have Vyasadeva who's like, if there's, any, if there's ever a person who's like living harmonious, you know, it's like... He's sitting up there in the mountains in his deep meditation. He's not interested in sense gratification at all. He's got no personal separate agenda. He's given his life, you know, to serving, to serving humanity, to serving God by serving humanity, by compiling all the Vedic literature. But he's feeling some discordant note in his consciousness, right? Something's not quite right. I want to get to the bottom of it. I want to find it. I'm not going to try to cover it up, right? I'm not going to try to eat it away. What, what are all the things you always list, right? You know, you can eat, you can shop, you can do all these different things to make that discordant note in our mind cover it for some time. Yes. Right? But he wanted to go right to it, identify it, find it, address it, correct it, you know. And so, you know, that's, that's really what our, you know, you could say what our path is all about. You know, it's, we can recognize my mind has become programmed in such a way where it's discordant, where it's unharmonious with that of the spiritual realm or with that of God, I need to get it back. Right? And that's it's a full doing. circle, man. This is, this is how we started the show. And how do you it's get it back? Right back you hear those nuggets. You hear those sutras. You hear those she might kernels, time every day. Kernel, kernels yeah. of wisdom. <laughs> kernels. I'm going to start calling you Colonel Wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Colonel Wisdom. <laughs> I don't want to be Colonel. Is Commandant? <laughs> do we have takeaways, Mara? We do. Yeah, give, us, give us a nug, nugget of wisdom. <laughs> All right. Well, nuggets of wisdom. Wisd? <laughs> wisd? No. Wisdom. You shorted it down to wisd. Like cheese whiz. <laughs> Remember that cheese whiz? It was cheese. Only Americans eat this stuff. Oh, man. Cheese you that. spray in a bottle? What? Yeah. My mom didn't buy Pro it. Super processed food. Super processed. All right, nuggets of wisdom become our spiritual armor. Nuggets Jeez, of wisdom become our spiritual armor. Okay. Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Boom. Boom. Maris yeah. tattoo, we finally figured it out. <laughs> I could actually see her getting that. <laughs> yeah. When the mind is out of harmony with the soul, we experience discord, anxiety, and fear. Okay. True, but not a shirt. Yes. <laughs> Drain when the I body. say not a shirt, I mean, it's not concise enough. You know, what about this one? Train the body to dance with the soul. Oh, there you go. That's a tattoo right there. Yeah. No, we're gonna, yeah, like, no. yeah. yeah. And you can it's get at least some, a like, t shirt. You can okay. get like Nataraj. Yeah, yeah. As, you, as you become more spiritual, you become aware of the discordance within. Okay, yeah, you do. When we aren't acting in God consciousness, we are imposters. Mm. Mm. Harmonize the mind with the nature of the self. Okay. How about imposters are always in anxiety that they're going to get found out? 
Is that a tattoo? It's not a tattoo. I think imposters are always in anxiety that they're going to get found out. (laughs) Thank you, Colonel. (laughs) Colonel Wisdom. Good day. (laughs) Thanks, Eric, for joining us this morning. Ah, I woke up with a headache and a little sort of like sad about something, and now I feel enlivened and happy. Yeah, you were discordant earlier, but now I was, I was the same way. I wasn't connected with my Jiva. And, and now you reprogram really, the mind. You were moving time. real slow too. You were not like like you you were like you. It's like when you put the podcast on slow, and it's like well, okay. Or <laughs> now you're moving. Now you're ready for the day to face the day. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Thanks all you zoomies. Thanks to all the people that joined us late. That didn't say good morning to. I'll get you in a moment. Stay around while we dance. If you're not on Zoom, you better join Zoom because it just doesn't end. I know the podcast usually just ends. We have a whole little dance party. So you can join our Zoom by getting Mara to give you the secret codes at wisdomofthesages108 at gmail.com. Say secret codes, please. Secret Secret codes, Colonel Mara. Hey, remember to mention today's the day to sign up for the uh, picnic so we know how many people are coming. Yeah, we got to know. We don't want you just showing up with your bowl of salad. We want you to. We want this organized, and um, and want to thank David Charles Wilson, and Ariana Lindbergh for helping us organize this whole thing. Central Park Sunday at two o'clock. I'm going to be in Boston. You register by writing to Wisdom of the Sages 108 at gmail.com and just put picnic in the subject. Picnic, picnic, picnic. I'm going to be in Boston tomorrow. Boston Yoga Union. Um, oh, right. The, it might be sold out. But uh, uh, okay, well, I got something. I'm I'm going to be at the Bhakti Center doing? tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, go to either one depending on who you like better. Okay, how does right. that sound? Okay, <laughs> Mara, where will you go? <laughs> but I'll be at the Bhakti Center for their Soul Talks, soul which talks. is at 11. I think it's are 11 you, to 1 or 11.30 to 1.30, something like that. I got a good subject. Talk? Huh? Are you doing the talk? I'm doing the talk, yeah. Oh, the soul my talk. God, man. Yeah. So uh, you can go Soul to BhaktiCenter.org. And under their, um, I, I think of the menu item, it's like uh, in-person programs. There's Soul Talks. Or go to my Facebook page. You'll find details there. It's free of charge. It's, uh, I, I think it'll be fun. Please come. Not mine. Mine's expensive. Um, <laughs> um, what, do you think, it, it, what do you think speaking in tongues is? Is that Soul <laughs> Talk? Like, oh, no. What was that? What is I that? I don't know if there's any truth to it or not. I mean, I guess it talks about in the Bible. There's probably come some on. truth to it. Yeah. Speaking in tongues. Speaking um, of shaking, like the shakers and the Quakers. But you see what they do. They try to fake it, you know. I don't That's it. imposters. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. I don't want to judge. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's people trying to fake it. I, I'm there sure. There probably about are. <laughs> but there's, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's p- devoted people trying to fake it, too. But I'm just saying. Well, what I'm, is the, what I'm, is the we weren't talking about shaking? that. You were talking about people speaking in tongues. I said I think at least some I of them are faking it. there's some right? people that are real talking in yeah, tongues. Well, and I think there's some be. shakers and Quakers who are real. There's shakers, there's Quakers, and there's fakers. And, oh, ooh, I like that, Colonel <laughs> okay. Wisdom. I like that. <laughs> Colonel Wiz. <laughs> Co-Wiz, we call it for short. It's like J-Lo of the... Uh, thanks, everybody. Hey, Patreon community, you got to support us. We need some money. Yeah. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Wisdom of the Sages. Make your monthly contribution. Um, Jiva G Life Coaching said, who's that naked guy walking behind you? She's wait- He was waiting for his tea lock to dry there. Jiva, don't criticize him. He was walking around with a fan on. And it's 85 degrees. Cut him some slack. Thanks, everybody. Let's clap. Come on, start clapping those hands. <laughs> <laughs>